Good morning, everybody. Let's get on our feet and worship this morning. We're excited to be here. We're going to take it back a little bit. Y'all should all know this right here. Let's get the hands together right quick. Come on. Come on, we're going to sing, Oh, Precious. Sing, Oh, Precious is the flood that makes me white as snow. No other bounds I know. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in the blood. All souls. All souls it's on by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not ashamed to what was held me down. How beautiful that cleansing flood. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in the blood. Hey, come on. Oh, precious is the flood that makes me white as snow. Ashamed of what will shackle me. How infinite that grace divine. I am free, I am free, I am a child of God. Come on, see, oh, precious. And oh, precious is the flood that makes me white as snow. Priceless, how precious there is power in the blood. Come on, of if you believe Jesus. it, sing it. How priceless, how precious there is power in the blood of Come on. Jesus. How priceless, how precious there is power in the blood of Jesus. How priceless, how precious. There's power in the blood. Yes, there is power, power. One word in power in the blood. Oh, the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power. One word in power in the blood. Oh, there is power. There is power, power. One word in power in the blood. Oh, the Lamb. There is power. Christ my Lord, now I'm raised to life forevermore. My name's been called upon your heart. No, not death, no, not hell could ever rip us apart. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No. Come on, give him 
a shout of praise this morning. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For the Lord our God has given us a spirit of sound mind, power and a sound mind. There we go. This next song that we're about to declare just speaks that scripture over you. That a sound mind and a spirit of the fear has to go. So I just encourage you to sing that with us this morning. If you need to sit and just rest in the presence, let this be that time to just have a sound mind for the Lord to renew you this morning. suffering you're here with me in the darkness you never leave god of mercy you are walking with me and i surrender anxiety all the striving has to cease in this moment you're still the king this is a gift you are giving to me the sound my for the spirit of fear a sound my soul that i can see clearly a sound mine your spirit is here a sound mine a sound mine thank you jesus for your peace oh father you have given us a sound mind this morning lord Come on, sing, there's a table. And there's a table where we meet. It's in the presence of my enemies. And I will listen, I will feast on every word you are speaking to me. And I remember who you are. You are my fortress and my God. And I will stand in authority. In Jesus' name, all this darkness will flee. A sound my for the spirit of fear. A sound my soul that I can see clearly. A sound mine, your spirit is here. A sound mine. Come on, sing that out this morning. A sound mine for the spirit of fear. A sound mind, so that I can see clearly. A sound mind, your spirit is here. A sound mind, a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you saved and delivered me, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, let's sing. He saved. Will he saved, he delivered me, and Jesus would wash over me. Command my soul awake, arise, use each breath to prophesy, to prophesy. Come on, do you believe that? Will he saved, he delivered me, and Jesus blood wash over me. Come my soul awake, arise, use each prayer to prophesy. I prophesy this morning. He saved, healed, delivered me. Jesus' blood washed over me. Come my soul awake, arise, use each prayer to prophesy. I prophesy, come on, he saved. He saved, healed, delivered me. In Jesus' blood, wash over me. Come let my soul awake, arise. Use each breath to prophesy. I prophesy. A sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound mind so that I can see clearly. A sound mind, your spirit is here. A sound mind. Come on, sing it out. A sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound my 
so that I can see you clearly. The sound mind, your spirit is here. The sound mind, the sound mind. declare that he saved us. Well, he saved, healed, delivered me. And Jesus' blood washed over me. Come let my soul awake, arise. You just got to prophesy. Oh, I prophesy. He saved, he saved, healed, delivered me. And Jesus' blood washed over me. Come let my A sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound my soul that I can see clearly. A sound mind, the spirit is here. A sound mind, come on, believe that this morning. A sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound my soul that I can see clearly. A sound mind, your spirit is here. A sound mind, come on, sing it one more time. A sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound mind so that I can see clearly. A sound mind, your spirit is here. A sound mind, the sound mind. Come on, let's give him a shout of praise. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything you need, you've got. There's honey in the rock. For the living well, come on, and only you can satisfy. Come on, sing it out, sweetness, in sweetness at the mercy seat. Now I've tasted, it's not hard to see. Then only you can satisfy. Come on, this honey, this honey in the rock, this honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. Come on, sing hey. this. Hey. In freedom, where the spirit is in body. In, in the wilderness. Come on. Hey. You will always satisfy. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. Hey. There's honey in the rock. I keep looking, I keep finding. You keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need, and you are all that I need. Come on, and I keep praying. You keep moving. I keep praising, you keep proving, I've all that I need, yeah. and you are all that I need. Yeah. And I keep looking, I keep fighting, you keep giving, keep providing, I've all that I need, and you are all that song. 
There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. Come on, sing, oh how. And oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. And oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. And oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Hey, slap about three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people a high five and tell them, I'm trusting in the Lord today. And then you can be seated. So good morning and welcome to Bethel. Man, what a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Let's just take advantage right now of putting our hands together and thanking God for the rain that has already come and the rain that's going to be coming. We got, a, we got a chance last night to drive up to, uh, to King County and do a little church up there. And I'm telling you, it's wet in Stonewall County. It's wet in King County. It's wet in Cottle County. It's water standing in places. I ain't seen it stand in years. So... Praise the Lord for all of that. So, um, once again, welcome. Glad you're here today. Um, we love the Lord. We love hanging out with you. We love singing. We love worshiping. We love the Word of God. And we love gathering on Sundays to hear what God is up to and where God is moving us in our lives. So, we're um, finishing out our series today. Our series today, we've been talking about through the last six weeks about generosity, about learning to give, how God wants us to be givers, how our world is filled with takers. We want to take this. We want to take from our government. We want to take from our church. We want to take from our job. We want to take everywhere. We want to take, but God is going, no. God God says, I want you to give freely. You have received. How many of you can say a good amen if you realize everything you got is a gift from the Father up above? And the quicker that we realize it's a gift, the easier it is to give to other people because giving changes our life. So we're going to jump in with both feet. Um, last week, we started a discussion about honoring God with our finances. Honoring God with our finances. We used the example of this giving ladder, if you will. How that some people have never given to the Lord. They've never given to their church. And so what we want to do is we just want to step you up one rung. We just want you to grow. We want you to go. If you've never given, we want you to give. Some of you want to give to emotional needs, to a sick person, to a family, to a missionary, to the school. Here's ultimately where we want to get everybody where we tithe. We're, that's what we're going to talk about today, where we give 10% of what we make every week, every month, without question, we give it back to the Lord and to the Lord's work. Beyond tithing is where you go, you know what, I'm giving my 10%, but I want to give a little bit more. Offerings are above and beyond tithe, and then today we'll talk more about when the Spirit just moves on your heart, how you just give, and you're obedient to the Spirit of God. You know, can I just say this, I know I'm talking about money, and I'm talking about tithing today, but how many of you know we can learn anything from any kind of lesson that the preacher might preach and anything that would come out of the Word of God? Because you know, I'm talking about wanting you to step up and grow in your area of finances, but you know what? I want you to step up and grow one rung in your relationships as well. I want you to step up one rung in your attitude. I want you to step up in one rung in your responsibility. That's what God wants from you and I. He wants to save us, to deliver us, to wash us in that wonderful cleansing blood and make us a new creation, but He doesn't want us to flatline. He wants us to constantly be moving up and stepping stepping up and being all that we can be for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
just step up. One, look at your neighbor right quick. Say, hey, neighbor, it's time for you to step up. Whoo, that hurt, didn't it? Turn to the other neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor, time for me to step up. So today we're going to talk about tithing. We're going to talk about 10%. Everybody say 10%. We're going to talk about tithing. We're going to talk about offerings, also known in the Scripture as free will. It's just when you want to give. And then we're going to talk about Spirit-led giving. Today, we'll start with Scripture. We'll start with the Word of God. Malachi chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. You can write that down in your notes, tap it in your phone. This is the Scripture, Matthew 3, 6 through 12. For I, the Lord, do not change. How many of you know God doesn't change? Doesn't change to fit into our ideologies. Doesn't change to fit into our culture. Doesn't change to fit into the political party's opinions of the day. God does not change. God's principles don't change. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your father, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. From the beginning of time, you and I, no matter how good we are, no matter how much better we are, we are always turning away from God's statutes and God's principles and wanting to do it our way. Come on, somebody. Let's just be honest about it. Return to me, God says, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and test me in this now, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delight, a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Pray with me. Father, speak to us today. Challenge us today. Lord, get us, let us have open hearts. Let us have open minds. Let us have open ears. Let us, we need you to speak to us because we want to grow and we want to step up. Have your way in this service in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said? So we're talking about money. And like I said to you last week, and I'm going to say it again today, if we're really honest and we're really telling the truth, money drives the world that we live in. Money drives the world that we live in. We will do many, many things to get some more money. We'll do many things. I've seen it over my lifetime, over 21 years of ministering. We will work overtime to get some more money. We will wear ourselves out physically and mentally and relationally. We will wear ourselves out to get some more money. We will neglect our families and raising our sons and daughters. We will neglect our marital responsibilities trying to get some more money. We will work on Sunday to get more money. We'll skip church if I just got to work. We will even be, can we be real this morning? If we're selling some cattle or we're selling some horses, or we're trying, or selling an old pickup, we'll even be a little bit untruthful sometimes in order to get some more money. We will even do some shady, shifty stuff sometimes to get more money. That's the hard truth that we don't want to talk about and that we don't like. We will certainly cheat the government on our income tax to get a little bit more money. Can I get a witness? Money drives the world that we're in. And the scripture, let me remind you, 1 Timothy 6.10 says this, for the love of money. See, money is not bad. It's not bad if we have money, but it's bad if money has us. The love of money, not money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So this is exactly why the Lord tests us in the area of finances. He tests us because he knows how we can get to loving money. We're going to talk about tithing. Scripture just talked about a tithe. Tithe means a tenth. Another term for our tithe or for our tenth, it's known as the first fruit. It's the first fruit. That represents the fact that this, God doesn't want our leftovers, God wants our first fruits. 
That means that when we have received a blessing, when we have received a check, when we have received our monetarily pay for our job, we don't pay the light bill, we don't pay the car bill, we don't pay the hairdresser, we don't pay the horseshoer, we don't pay for the cow feed, and then if there's anything left over at the end, we'll go ahead and give it to God. It is a principle where God says, I gave my first fruit to you. God gave his only begotten son so that all of us could have have eternal life and God asks for us to give him our first back to him first fruit oh y'all got quiet didn't you take it off the top first fruit give it back to God let me give you some scripture Proverbs 3 9 and 10 honor the Lord with your wealth how many know we're all wealthy in here today come on y'all we're all wealthy honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits first fruits of all of your produce then watch this See, how I many you know when God asks us to make a sacrifice, there will always be a promise attached to the end of it. And how many of you know the promises of God are yes and amen? God is not a man that he should lie. If he says it, it will come to pass. If we learn to honor the Lord with our wealth and our first fruits, then, everybody shout, then. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. When we return to God. He will return to us according to Malachi. And when we give God our first fruits, he says, I will fill your barns up. Leviticus 27, 30. Every tithe of the land, every 10%, whether it is of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, it is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. It's holy. God says that's a holy thing. And, and, and God is a God of holiness. Watch this scripture right here. Proverbs eleven twenty six, 26, for if the first piece of the dough is holy, the lump is also, and if the root is holy, the branches are too. Scripture teaches us that our first fruit is holy unto God. And if we give what is holy back unto God, the first piece of the dough, then a little leaven will leaven the whole lump. And when we give what is holy back to God, God will multiply and make everything else holy and fill us up with what we need. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Give you one more. You ready for this one? Oh, wait. No, I'm not. Take it back. Sorry. Got ahead of myself. Back to Malachi, verse 6 and 7, back to the opening scripture. God says, I don't change, but you know what you've done? You've slipped away from my ordinances. You've slipped away from my statutes. And, and, and can, I, can I be real with y'all today? Can I hear a good amen? Usually what happens when times get tough, when recession hits, when diesel goes up to $5 a gallon, when feed goes up, when everything gets crazy in groceries or you can't afford them, generally speaking, you know what we quit giving to? The Lord. That's generally speaking, that's generally what, what happens. And, and in verse 7 of Malachi, God says, I'm asking you to come back to me in this. Don't run away from me. Don't shy away. Come back to me in this. I want you to know God wants to bless you. How many of you believe that? Say a good amen. amen. We need to believe that. We need to believe that God wants to do exceeding abundant above and beyond in our lives. We need to believe that God doesn't want us to have a poverty mentality. We need to believe that God wants to bless us physically, spiritually, emotionally, and that God wants us to walk in financial blessings. Because we're his children, and we're his representative, and if we're always broke, and if we're always poor, and if we never ever have any good things, that doesn't represent God well. God wants us, and some of us need to believe that. And because God says in verse 8, you know what? It says we cheat God. That's what scripture says we rob God when we don't pay us. It goes on to say this, that if we're robbing God of that tithe, it says that we're going to be cursed with a curse. Now look at me a second, okay? I'm not telling you God is going to curse you. 
But I'm telling you, our disobedience to the Word of God can bring a curse over our life. I'm not saying you're, if you don't tithe, listen to me, look, look, look. I am not saying that if you don't tithe, your whole life is going to be cursed and every area of your life is going to be cursed. But I am saying if we don't learn to give and tithe and free will offerings, that there will become a curse on our finances because of our disobedience. It's what the Word of God says <clears throat> disobedience can i tell you this god is a good god can i hear an amen god is a god of love god wants to bless his children but you know what when we are disobedient to god in any area we tie the hands of god my kids when they grew up i wanted to give them everything but sometimes in their disobedience, they were showing me that they were not mature enough for me to be able to give them the greatest blessings. So therefore, because they were disobedient, they tied my hands because you can't bless a kid that's living in disobedience or you will raise up a little godless heathen who thinks he's entitled to everything in life. Boy, that'll preach right now in 2022 in the United States of America. Come on, somebody. That's the problem. And God is the same way. God is a good father, but we have to learn to be obedient to him. See, we have to make a choice. I mean, you know, people make choices. Choices make people. We have to make a choice. Am I going to trust God in the area of my finances? You trusted him to save you. You trusted him to forgive you. You trusted him to heal you. You trusted him to protect you. Why shouldn't we trust him in the area of money? You have to make a choice. Deuteronomy eleven twenty six. 26. See? I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Setting it before you. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside from the way that I am commanding you today to go after other gods that you have not known. You have to choose. You have to make a choice. Malachi says, God wants your first fruit. God wants you to tithe to the storehouse. That's what the scripture says. Bring your tithe to the storehouse. You want know to tell what the storehouse is? The storehouse is where you go to get spiritually fed. Wherever you go, that's what that means. That means to bring it to the storehouse. And so if you attend church here, this is where you ought to be tithing. I've had people over the years that say to me, well, Brother Cody, we just love coming to church over there. But you know what? We just feel led to give our tithe to some other church. And you know what I say to that? Well, then, baby, you need to drive to that other church and go over there because that's your storehouse and that's where you're getting meat and that's where you're getting fed. Bring it into the storehouse, wherever that is, wherever you go, that's what it means. It's simply all of this stuff. It's a faith thing. God doesn't need our money. Come on, y'all. But he allows us to be a part of his work and a part of what he is doing here on the earth. It's simply a test of your heart. Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure, that's where your heart will be. That's where your heart will be. The last part of the Malachi scripture, uh, of verse number 10, God says this, and I love this. He said, try me. He said, try me in this. Try me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. There will be not enough room for you to even receive what I want to do. How many believe God is in heaven and God can open the windows of heaven and God can pour out huge blessings in our life? And he's saying in this, try me, try me in this, try me. Now listen to me, uh, listen to me, okay, because some of you already twisted mind, kind of like me, and you're going, hey, I think I'm going to try that today, and if something don't happen this next week, I'll give up on that deal. Listen, tithing is not a one-time thing. It's not like going to the carnival and maybe you win like that. <laughs> it's saying every day, it's saying it's my heart, not a weekly thing, but I'm going to start. I'm going to try. I'm going to start tithing. I'm going to start giving on a weekly basis. It's a faithful lifestyle thing. I will even say this to you. My elders and deacons are fixing the crap right now. You Listen to me. God says try me. God said try him. But I'm going to tell you this. If you faithfully tithe to this place for six months on a weekly basis and you don't see a blessing and an increase in your financial area, we'll give you all your tithe back. Y'all got quiet, didn't you? 
Because it's scripture. It's principle. God says start doing it by faith. Listen to this. Here's, here's another promise of God, y'all. This blows me away. I wish somebody would have taught me this a, a lot younger than they did. I didn't know this till I was 25 years old. Malachi 3, 11 and 12. He said, if you bring your tithe, I'll open the window and I'll pour out a blessing that you won't be able to receive. And he says this, I will rebuke the devourer for you. How many of you is the devourer, which is the devil, messing with you right now? How many of you is he messing with your family, messing with your marriage, messing with your finances, messing with your kids? God said the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and if you will overcome your trust in money, and if you'll start trusting me, and you'll step out in faith and give me your first fruit, I'll pour out a blessing that you can't receive, and I'll step up, and I'll rebuke that devil and tell him to get off of your life. Wow. It's what the Word of God says. So that your fruit of your soil, no, no, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. God said, people are going to call you blessed because I'm going to rebuke the devourer for you. Man, so good. And I would challenge you, if you haven't tithed, start practicing your tithing. Start practicing. Step up to that next level. Now I want to move on today. I want to talk about that's tithing. Every one of us should do that. Every child of God. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. It's a statute. And it's proven and tried that it will work. But then the next step, because I, I really believe the majority of you tithe in here today. I really believe you do. And I, or I believe you're fixing to start. But then there's a step above. It's called offerings. Scripture talks about it being a free will offering. Just free will. Just extra um, I want to show you how people will give. I'm going to show you scripture. I'm going to show you a story. When people develop a kingdom mindset, not a mindset of this world, not a mindset of our, uh, our economy, but when we develop a kingdom mindset, when we're a, and by that I mean that, that we realize everything I got from God. And then we also begin to realize, you know what? I want to serve and give back. I want to serve and give back. I want to, and then you understand the principle of sowing and reaping, that you give it away, and whatsoever you sow, that you shall also reap. Let me show you what happens in the Word of God when people get a vision and get a kingdom mindset. Exodus 36, verse 1 through 7. Now, Bezalel and Aholiad and every skillful person in whom the Lord has put skill and understanding to know how to perform all the work in the construction of the sanctuary. They're building a, a sanctuary. They're building this church. and They're building the tabernacle. And God says, you know what? I've given everybody some kind of skill. Look at me right quick. Look at me. Every one of you have some kind of skill and some kind of gift that you can do, that you can use to glorify God. Maybe you can't preach. Well, guess what? I can't drive a nail, man. I'm just telling you. I can't. Maybe you can't drive a nail, but maybe you can come and you can take care of children. We all have some kind of gift that we can give back to the kingdom of God. And when they're building, everybody came together. And it said, they shall perform in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. God said, this is the way we're going to build the church. Then Moses called Bezalel and Aholiad and every skillful person in whom the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred in him to come to the work to perform it. Everybody's heart was stirred to be a part of what they're doing. They received from Moses all the contributions. People bring in their, 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 their gifts, but their, their talent, but they're bringing their money as well. Moses, they bring him all the contributions which the sons of Israel had brought to perform the work and the construction of the sanctuary, and they still continued bringing to him free will offerings every morning. They're, they're bringing it every morning. He's not begging for it. They're free willing it. He's not even asking. They're not even passing the plate. He's, they're free willing it. And all the skillful men who were performing all the work of the sanctuary came each from the work which he was performing and they said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for the construction work which the Lord commanded us to perform. They had a heart. It was stirred. They weren't passing the plate. They were giving, and they were giving, and the people are going like, they're giving a bunch, y'all. They're continuing to give. So Moses issued a command. I pray this happens in my church someday, in Bethel someday. So Moses issued a command, and a proclamation was circulated throughout the camp saying, 
Let no man or woman any longer perform any work for the contributions of the sanctuary. Thus, the people were, strained, were restrained from bringing any more. For the material that they had was sufficient and more than enough for all the work to perform it. They had a heart for God. They had a heart to give back, to build the house of God, to build the sanctuary of God. They had a heart, and they just kept giving, and they kept giving, and they kept giving, and Moses finally goes, stop. We got too much. I am just convinced, and I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to move on because y'all are getting that look like, oh, Cody, you're stretching me way too much right now. I'm really convinced, and I said this last week, and I'll say it again. Churches are famous for skimping by on little measly budgets. They're famous for just trying to get by and just barely do enough and skim across and pay people this and just, just skimming by a little bit. But I really believe that God has resourced the people of every church there are that if we would give out of the abundance of our heart, we would have more than enough to have the best sanctuaries and the best lighting and the best staff and the best everything in the world. God is saying to some of you today, are you ready to step up? And begin to give some offerings above and beyond your tithing. Those were free will. I would say this, tithing, tithing is mandatory. Offering is free will. Let me give you one more. Let's talk about, we talked about first fruits. We talked about free will. Let's talk about spirit-led giving. What does that mean? What does it mean to have spirit-led giving? So when we, if y'all remember a year or so ago, this place flooded, and we had to meet next door for about a year. I had to redo a bunch of electrical in here, and we get an electrical guy up in the top up here, you know, and they go, man, your wiring needs to be kind of changed. It's kind of, it's out of code. It needs to be updated. It's not good. And man, it was like crazy expensive on what it was going to cost. And can I just tell you, um, at the, I just told the people that one day, and that afternoon, a man came to David Hager and Troy Cooper, our elders here, and just handed them a check for $15,000. People that tithe, people that give offering, but they said the Spirit of God just moved on my heart, and I don't want us to have to worry about that right over there. Spirit-led giving, 15000 bucks. I'm not telling you it needs to be 15000 It can be littler than that. But there are times when the Spirit of God moves on us, that, and He's asking us to be obedient in the area of giving. A couple of weeks ago, we went on vacation to Riodosa. Give me another example. Um, we went on this vacation to Riodosa, my family, Jay Cooker's family. We go out there, we're hanging out, and we're just having a, a good time. And, and Jake says to me, hey, jump in the truck. I got to run down there to the dry cleaners. He wears, you know, them suits when he sings and performs. He goes, I got to pick my suits up down there. I had to have them dry cleaned. So we go down there. We go in the, in the dry cleaners. He gets all of his suits, and we come out. And there's a lady sitting in a vehicle there. And Jake says, hey, I know this lady. I got to say hello. And he goes over, and she gets out of the car. She goes, ah, Cody. And it dawned on me that I knew her from a while back, years back. You know, she's from this part of the area. And so anyway, we visit a little bit. And so we load up and go, by, go home. And, and and so we're take, going to the little putt-putt place down there in the, in the, in the, in the go-kart place down there. I, and just if you're wondering, I smoked them on the golf carts, and I smoked them in putt-putt too. But Jake, he's on the phone over. And I'm like, dude, get off the phone. You are with your family. He goes, dude, shut up. You need to hear this. And so he gets off the phone. He goes, you remember that lady that we just accidentally happened to run into down there a while ago? He said, when she left... She said, the Spirit of God moved on her heart and said, I want to bless them two guys because I love them guys. And she's coming here to the putt-putt place. We got to go out and meet her in the, at the car. And so me and Jake walk out there and meet her in the car. And she takes out a 1000 bucks cash in this hand and gives to Jake and said, the Lord put on my heart for you guys. Have a great vacation. And it's on me. And she gave me $1,000 too. Spirit-led giving. She tithes. She gives offering. But she allowed the Spirit to move in her finances. Cornbread, y'all come help me close this thing. Here's the, here's the deal. God's a God of generosity. He's a giver. He's given to us. And you know what he says? I desire for you to be givers as well. I want you to give. I want you to give. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Learning to give can we be real? Look at me. Challenging sometimes. 
I said this before. When your children were born, how many of you have children or grandchildren? When they were born, were they born just with a giving nature? Or were they a little bit kind of stingy and want to just hang on to their stuff? You had to teach them, and they had to grow in learning to be a giver. Some of us, we've not been taught to be givers this way. And so we have to learn, and we have to grow, and it can be tough. Just one step up. That's all we're asking. That's all God is asking. Because it'll be a blessing to you, it'll be a blessing to others, and it will be a blessing to the kingdom of God. So bow your heads, if you will. We're going to pray, and then we're going to close with a song of worship. Father, we just love you, and we thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for your word. Your word is so true. Your word is tried and proven. Your word has never failed us. And Lord, we thank you for the promises in your word that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you for the promises that say no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. We thank you for the promises that say we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We thank you for those promises that encourage us and that feel good and that bring joy and passion and excitement to us. But God, we thank you for those passages that cause us to cringe a little bit. We thank you for your promises that cause us to go, whoa, wait just a minute. We thank you for your promises and your statutes that push us and stretch us in ways that we've never been stretched before. So Holy Spirit, my prayer in this place today is that you would just fall in this place. Holy Spirit, you would just begin to move on the hearts and the minds of men and women. Lord, I don't care where they are, but you know where they are in the area of giving. And I pray you would urge them nudge them to take a step up and grow and mature in this area. Lord, I I believe by faith there's some men and women today in this room that are hearing this word and they're taking it to heart and they're fixing to take a step up and they're fixing to make a move. And I'll just say this, God, I look forward to this next year. I look forward to watching a blessing be on their life. I look forward to watching them flourish in their finances. I look forward to this place flourishing in finances. I look forward to this place growing and building the kingdom of God in great and mighty ways. So Holy Spirit, move and speak as we close in worship. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Will you stand up on your feet? Let's close with a song of worship. Hey, turn me on back here, Mark. Hey, I want us to take just a second. We have a member of our uh, worship team that runs in the sound booth that's having some kind of little attack and little spell right now. 
and they've just got him and they've got him to the to the front foyer and he's down out there and they have the ambulance on the way so you know what we want to exercise one of those principles in the word of god and that principle is this that where two or three agree on anything is touching it it shall be done and that there's power in agreeing in prayer so right now i want to ask you i know i interrupted everything but right now I want us to just stop and pray for Will. Father, we just love you and we thank you for today. And we thank you that we can stop any time of day. We thank you, God, that you're a very present help in time of need. And that you don't care about programs and you don't care about plans. That there's times, God, we can just stop in the middle and say, we trust you. Because it is so sweet to trust in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we just pray for our brother out there right now. Lord, we pray that your spirit would come and would protect him and would touch him. Lord, we trust the word of God when it says the son of righteousness has risen with healing in his wings. We trust the word of God when it says by the stripes that Jesus took, we are healed. We trust the word of God that the effectual, fervent prayer of righteous men and women avail much. And so, God, we pray for him this very moment. Lord, touch him his body. Lord, move in a way that even the doctors can't move. Move in a way that when the ambulance gets here, they go, wow, you're okay. And God, you'll get the glory out of all of that. Lord, I speak peace into his life and I speak peace into the life of his wife. Lord, everybody out there, God, just you be God and you be glorified in this situation. Touch him and heal him. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, let's keep singing now and then we'll be done. Sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Yes, he is. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Oh, you are. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. And holy, there is no beside you, there is no beside you, open up our eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and
not beside you Open up our eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Amen, amen Hey, y'all be seated for a moment, please. I got to go over a few announcements with you. Hey, I first we want to just welcome our visitors today. Come on, Bethel, put your hands together and let all of our visitors know. We love you guys and gals. We celebrate you. We hope you got a visitor's card. If you're a first or second time visitor, hope you got a visitor's card when you came in. If you did, fill it out and leave it in your seat or drop it off with someone. Um, we just want to connect with you. We want to walk down the, the journey, the spiritual journey with you. If you didn't get a visitor's card, Scan that QR code, you can fill out a digital form online, and we can connect with you. We have a free gift we want to send you um, in the mail. Um, next Sunday, on August the 28th, we're going to have baptism. How awesome is that? Those are so, so exciting, so fun, and um, we really like to celebrate baptisms here. And I talked to a couple this week, and I said, hey, are y'all going to be here? And they go, we ain't missing Bethel baptisms over there. They're fun. So come hang out with us next week. If you are interested in, in being baptized and you have not signed up yet, like today's your last day. It's your last chance because we get everybody T-shirts and um, we need your T-shirt size. So there's a, you have to fill out, um, scan that one. How about that? I'm, I'm having to change my thoughts because let me just tell you, I need your cooperation in this medics are all up front and so I need your cooperation I need you guys to go out these doors today I, I know that may be an inconvenience for you and you always went out that door but I'm asking you for the safety and concern of those up front let's go out this door which would obviously kind of take you to White Horse open house anyway so I was gonna tell you to sign up sheet Gigi where's Gigi oh she got okay she's got the baptism sign up sheet at, out that door so if you want to sign up on paper you can do that with Gigi she's the one that has to duck her head to go into the doors over there what else am I doing here okay so we're talking about tithing and giving and most a lot of you know we have a platform where you can sign up to automatically tithe at this church much like you do your pay your bills or whatever you need this automatic draft well, we, we've switched from that platform to a new one. And, and, and so all of you that have been giving on Subsplash for the last three years, we need you to switch. We need you to sign up because you got about three weeks left and it's not going to work anymore. So it's better to be proactive. If you have never signed up for automatic giving and you want to, you can check that out right there. Our website is great. Bethel-Anson.com has all the instructions, all the directions. You can also scan that right there. It will take you. But, but we need you to get on that because we got three weeks left. This is a much better platform. There's less hidden fees. There's less cost. It gets us to, helps us to get the, the, uh, the website tied to the giving and get the app tied. And we all can do it in one. So we're streamlining. And it's going to be the best for all of us. Have I got everything here? Okay, I'm going to give out candy to the kiddos, and then Tubby's going to come close and talk to us about uh, White Horse's open house. So kiddos, y'all come on down. We got some fruit by the foot today. Hey, what are you doing, boy? How are you? What's up, cowboy? Bethel, not only is tomorrow the first day of classes for our 15 students and family, so exciting, but we've been, yeah, y'all give the Lord a hand, that's just amazing, but we've been super excited about today for two reasons, number one, we've been working hard preparing and excited for you guys to see what you've invested in over here and how we're going to work hard this year take care of what God's entrusted to us up here at White Horse Bethel. So we were so excited for you guys to come see that. So y'all swing in there. You don't have to stay long if you're in a hurry, but please come check 
check it out, see um, what's going on and how you've invested. And also, it's a good day to pray over White Horse together. So um, feel free, if you're over there, to just pray in the rooms over the kids. You'll see the names at the desks and the um, teachers' names. And so we, we covet your prayers. So invite you to do that while, while you're there. It's our church home. You guys, there's just, it's cool how God works. And, and this Beth, White Horse Bethel, I just don't know how it would have ever come to be without your support and your love and your prayers. And so many things that you think that's not a big deal, um, like Cassie Beer giving her time designing our shirts, you know, the sponsors that paid for our shirts so that we could have a little fundraiser from the T-shirts. Um, just your envelope giving, that raised almost $15,000 for the school, and that helped us buy the supplies that we really needed over here to start up the school year off right. So just all the things. Um, thank you so much. Wish we could express our thanks to you, but at least come check it out so we can hug your neck over there. We're going to close um, in a word of prayer. If you guys would stand and just extend your hand. Here's a few of our students, our White Horse Bethel students, and I um, want to take a minute to just um, agree in prayer over these sweet kids. Father, we just thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives here through Bethel, God. We just know that you're at work, Father. We see your hand at work, Father. We, we are grateful for the privilege of coming into this place and worshiping your name, Jesus, and doing what we know we can do to honor you, Father, in your kingdom. And that's our prayer. That's our heart. Lord, we thank you for these young people. They're young warriors. For your kingdom, Lord, there's work here on this earth for them, and we're thankful that we have an opportunity as a church family to lift them up, to support them, to encourage them, Father. Thank you for the growth that's going to come in these young lives, and thank you that you're going to grow them spiritually so they know you more and better. We think you're going to grow them relationally with their peers, with their families at home and their friendships, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you're also going to grow them educationally, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord, in every way. Thank you for Mrs. Fox. Thank you for her obedience to you and serving you and these children and these families this year. And we just pray, God, that you would lead and guide us and give us the wisdom that only you can give. And we pray that it's all to your glory. In Jesus' name.